gives me great, great pleasure to stand before you this evening and welcome you to this year's Award Media Dinner. Indeed, uh, just two years ago, um, as recent as 2020, this would not have been possible. Okay, it would have been an unrealizable dream. We do not take it for granted that you found time out of your busy personal and professional schedule to accept our invitation on, and join us on this very cold evening. Uh, I believe this could be one of the coldest days we have had um, in Nairobi and within the country. And I implore you to build networks, as uh, my colleague has said, tonight that will contribute positively to your profession and life. I'm joined today by a group of uh, dedicated ladies from the Our Board, who, although we are all accountants, bring very diverse uh, skills and personalities to the board. For our board members, uh, please stand up and just wave um, to the team. Any board member who is in today? Thank you, Sophia Robina. Thank you. So these are the ladies that I serve with. And I dare say, um, Sophia Robina serves as our treasurer. Okay, Sophia uh, Hotesha, who has just introduced herself, serves as the chairperson of uh, uh, the Member Services Committee. Sophia Josephine Itoka serves as a CSR and mentorship chair. And then we have the new entrants into the board. Sophia uh, Rono, who serves in the audit committee. Thank you. And Sophia Campbell, who serves in the governance um, committee as chairperson. Thank you, ladies. So uh, there is a saying that you are only as strong as your weakest being. When ladies and gentlemen, hakuna weakness, have only dedication, determination, and a willingness to serve, as you can see by the way they brought themselves out uh, this evening. If you're sitting next to somebody that you talk to every day, just go and sit next to somebody. I will now invite our chief guest speaker, that is Dr. Kathleen Gahu. Dr. Gahu holds a PhD in business administration and is well known in academia, where she has lectured and supervised research projects for over 25 years at the University of Nairobi. Um, for somebody who holds a, a PhD and has uh, been in academia for 25 years, but I believe she'll be giving us her story uh, this evening. So as an early entrant into the ICT policy sector, Dr. Ngahu contributed to the promotion of adoption of ICT in Kenya and served as a chairperson of the Kenya ICT Board, now known as ICT Authority or ICTA in Ukraine. She has also served and continues to serve on various boards, even now. Dr. Ngahu was awarded the Elder of Order of Burning Spear, EBS, so anytime you write her, I can just imagine that name. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ngahu, PhD, EBS. <laughs> In 2011, by the President of Kenya for her devoted service to the country. This amazing lady has graciously accepted to be our speaker this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give her a hearty welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ladies and I think there are some gentlemen. Yes. The ones to video. Yes. How nice to be in a room full of women in beautiful colors. Oh goodness. You all look so beautiful. And coming from our Tino School of Business, University of Nairobi. Many of you came from there, I'm sure. Mm. You, because you must come from some accounting, finance background. We have people finance. So a number of you must have come through that program. So we might even have met somewhere. Mm. But if I was on the other side. 
some people in um, finance come to uh, my class of consumer behavior because they realize that even if you are going to be dealing with money, you also need to understand behavior. So some of you might have attended my consumer behavior class. Anyone who did? Oh, yes! Yes, there has to be. I've never been anywhere where there was nobody who came to my class. Imagine. That is how the 25 years make sense. Eh? Yes. Ah, great. And then um, today I'm supposed to talk about emotional mastery. And I was like thinking, you are the people who have been engaging with the whole of this month, June. And I can see when Kenya Revenue is your sponsor. And they've been sending us emails every two seconds. <laughs> have you filed your returns yet? And some of us who run several businesses, it's quite a hectic time. Eh? And I think today, being on the 1st of July, is a good day when we are not dealing with those things. Eh? We met the deadlines because professionals like you helped us be on time. Eh? Yeah, so you came from a very important and uh, you know, respectable profession. A profession which no one can do without. I saw the Kenya Medical and I thought about how we need doctors. But these days we are realizing we need people from finance the same way. You almost can't survive in this country. Have you seen how the people who thought they could do without professionals like you are being harassed left, right, and center until their whole world comes collapsing? Are there KRA people here? <laughs> they are the ones who Tetanesha, they are high and mighty, and they make them remember they must work with professionals like you. Yes, so congratulations for the service you render to this country. I'm sure you also do devoted service, much as uh, you've been told I got my EPS for devoted service to the nation. I believe you also do devoted service in the different organizations that you serve. Now to the matter of, and I can see a friend of mine here. Oh, how are you? I'm sure there are clients of mine. She's one of my clients also. How can you power? Um, I, I mean, in my business, of experience with that, we serve very many clients, and I'm sure quite a number are represented here. But because we work with uh, marketing departments to a large extent, and to a little extent in HR, maybe you may not, maybe have seen us as a, in that context. Now, the question of emotional history, we talk about emotional history, and uh, many times we start to think about emotional intelligence. It's the way to learn how to master emotions. It's a subject that uh, maybe people would wonder how come I was called to come and talk about emotional mastery. But I, I did a YouTube video some time ago where I talked about this problem. And many times I work to develop some topics for myself or for training because they are a problem for me. I'm trying to advise myself. As I, and as I'm researching and learning, once I learn to some level, I decide to share it. I put it on my YouTube channel where I teach the world or whoever wants to learn something that I myself have learned. Yeah? So when we talk about emotional mastery and emotional intelligence, they sound like very big words, isn't it? They are extremely big words. But if we move to the next, we say that uh, much as they are very big words, we are all familiar with one word, emotions, isn't it? We all know about emotions and how emotions come to us and how they, the kind of uh, influence, they influence our thoughts, they influence our attitudes, they influence our actions, they influence our relationships, our relationships with people, our relationships with money, our relationships with our jobs, our relationships with our careers are influenced by emotions. I can see some of you looking with doubt. Do you see emotions coming in in all those areas of your life? Yeah. And that is why we say, if this emotion thing is everywhere we are, then we need to enhance our emotional intelligence so that we can be able to manage all these things. Because if all those areas that I've mentioned, which I think are totally important in our lives, are not in sync, or we are not managing them. Actually, they say you can't be 100%. Eh? It's like a continuum. It's about are you doing better or worse? Eh? So it's not a perfection thing. Like in life, there is really no perfection. It's about to just make sure that you are at a better place in the balance. We are not being 
you know how that swing that does like this, eh? You're not being taken down, you're moving up, eh? You are doing better than average. I think that should be the objective. So we say if you can master your emotions, you be stop playing small and be able to live according to your potential. The potential that God put in you. Because potential is God given. And every single person has been given some level of potential which we never reach, but which we are meant to aspire to. So that you can exploit as much as possible of that potential that is within you. So that's why we look at this question of emotional intelligence. Because we want to be able to say that we are living, we are optimizing what God has given us. If we can conquer our emotions, so I find conquer a very strong one, is that we'll be able to be more productive and more progressive and more, and we'll be able to do better in our work, career, and business, in our life as well. They say that uh, those who have researched this topic thoroughly, who I looked at, say that emotional intelligence or that ability to harness your emotions is critical to being able to progress your life, to have professional success and personal satisfaction and even happiness. That without it, you will suffer some deficit in this area. I know you are people of finance. You talk about deficit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so you don't want deficit. So one of the things we find in, our, in society, we become very adept at capturing our emotions in emojis. You know, when we write WhatsApp, it's like emoji, isn't it? Because we are trying to think, how do you capture the emotion I want to express in this message? That tells you how emotions are important. Eh? Because how come there's emojis for every feeling? From sad to happy to all those things. It's because emotions is something we engage with as human beings every single moment of our lives. In the next slide, I show the emotions that tend to challenge us. That tend to give us challenge more than I did put the other emotions like of happiness and all because maybe those don't challenge us as much. I just imagine these are some of the emotions that you feel and you want to work out. How do you uh, deal with the uh, emotions of, you know, anger and the like? And uh, I just remembered that uh, some time ago I saw a WhatsApp message that went round, you know, and round. That it, it was looking at the question of anger, anger management. In some countries like America, you will find that some people, when you go to court, and I found that very amazing when I was doing my studies, that you can go to court being accused of an offense, and the judge gives you a conviction, you are found guilty, but your penalty, instead of being jailed, is to attend anger management classes. It's very common. They actually, for people who have been expressing anger, you know, violence, road rage, and the like, or even violent uh, relationships in their homes with their against children or with their spouses, they are sometimes given that penalty that you must go to class and do anger management classes. And these anger management classes, they are taken through, you know, they are kind of helped to learn what creates the anger, how to deal with the anger and all that. And uh, this anger management class is compulsory because it's like, it's a judgment. Eh? So the teacher has a lot of authority. This are uh, it's kind of a therapist. They must take and confirm that you attended every class before you can be released from that uh, penalty. Just like if you are to pay a fine, there will be a receipt, isn't it? They are given a receipt. And that told me something. We don't maybe here we've not come to understand. Like all these offenses we come to see, many of them are driven by Emotions, we say that emotions are never negative, they are neutral, that's what uh, we say. But uh, it's how you deal with it that makes it positive or negative. But uh, I was wondering, in this country, do we, have we, have, we don't have such a thing, yeah? That's why we lock in everybody, that's why our jails are so busy, because we have not a, spent a bit of time, I think, and the judiciary needs to look at this, and the people who pass our laws, the people in parliament, 
to understand that emotional management can be actually one of the things we need to teach people so that we can we don't have to deal everybody who does a small offense so that people can learn and improve and therefore not do it again. And even the people who go to jail, we give them anger management training, isn't it? It would make a difference. Anyway, in this clip that I saw on WhatsApp, it was talking about that question of anger management. And what it did, it proposed a countdown approach that you, if you're angry with someone, it said, think before you talk. And then it said, that thing that person is equal to you, how do you do that before you talk? If that person is senior to you, count up to 50. Now oh, that's your case. <laughs> you are trying to protect your job, you better be counting. <laughs> if that person is your wife, how many should you count? <laughs> <laughs> that thing, it was so amazing. It recommended that if that person is your wife, keep counting. <laughs> And don't talk. And I think men understand that thing somehow, isn't it? How it is very, it can sort things, eh? And then it says, if that person is your husband, what do you think? <laughs> Keep talking and don't <laughs> Because if it's your husband, you keep talking and don't count. I found it so amazing. So I put it on my YouTube channel on a video of me on Anesting Emotions. And um, I got some interesting questions. And one was, suppose it's your parent. That's why I said, you need people to give. They need to know how many times should I count if it's my parent. What do you think? As we imagine and say, maybe you count a hundred, eh? Yeah. yeah, because you don't want to ever be on the offside of your parents, isn't it? You need to be very careful because there is a commandment about your parents. All these other people, you can count up to 50. But when it comes to your parents, and the Bible says that you should honor your parents so that your days. So if you're angry with your parents, first you should not even be angry because whatever they do, you should be more understanding and sympathetic to their situation and all that. Yeah, I can see someone who say count your million. Yeah, I think, yeah, you keep counting, you know, you better count forever. So you don't say anything good to your parents. I mean, I wonder, why did this person get come up with that? Because it's a question that troubles many people from all walks of life and in all stages of life. Young to old, senior to junior, all genders, <laughs> so, you know, we don't even say it's no longer that simple. Yeah, but it troubles people of all types, of all kinds, in all situations. That is, so people are always looking for answers. So even as I speak here, it's not that I have an answer. I'm here more to challenge you, to question you, to get you to think. And to maybe say, like they say in the university, that you've been given the power to go and read and do all that which will help you advance that. Eh? So it's to learn, for us to keep learning, it's just to trigger and say, we all need to keep learning, to keep learning about this question of emotional management. And now, what does this have to do with our personal development, which is the topic of today, that emotion, we are talking about emotions, emotional intelligence, or emotional mastery, and personal development. Basically, we are told that uh, the technical skills that got you there, where you are today, will not take you there, where you want to go. Yeah? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The technical skills that got you here will not take you there. Therefore, you need to, what will, you need to build more skills, isn't it? What skills are you needing? Many people think that the only skills you need to continue building is technical. But this skill of emotional intelligence is one of the important skills that we need to build to move to the next and the next and the next level. If you aspire to a higher leadership role, the one thing you are going to need is to work on enhancing emotional intelligence. It's not so much just adding your technical skill. And this EQ thing is critical because it helps us learn how to work with other people, how to collaborate, how to inspire, motivate, help people perform so that as a leader, 
your team is performing better because you are able to bring out the best in all of them. It's not about just you, but your ability then, what it does for you to enable you to be able to pick up other people. It helps you in managing stress, managing conflict. Those are personal things we all want to manage, isn't it? How to deliver feedback in a reasonable way. You know, the other day I had been asked to talk about how do you deliver feedback? How do you communicate to give feedback that is negative to like people who are your staff? Or even in your family. There is the truth and there is the fact, but also then there is the human and the relationship. How do you balance? So that even as you're giving negative feedback, or feedback, it's not negative, let me say, how you give it will determine whether it's negative or positive, isn't it? But let's say somebody has underperformed. Maybe even it's your spouse who is not doing what you expect. Maybe he didn't pick up the children at the right time. How do you tell them that? It's actually a question of emotional intelligence on how to balance and make sure that the message gets to them in a way that will build, not, destroy that will promote better behavior not worse behavior because you notice sometimes you can have an issue even in a family and you tell your child something and you're trying to correct them to advise them but the way you tell them instead of improving they become worse they repeat it they actually they want to almost dare you and repeat it and repeat it and you are wondering what do i do so that emotional intelligence is about that balancing in communication in relationships to ensure that things move on smoothly, not just at work, but also at home. They say that uh, emotional intelligence accounts for nearly 90% of what sets high performance apart from their peers. And these peers are people with similar technical skills. So technical skills are like the, the beginning point. Eh? It's also defined as the ability, emotional intelligence is defined as the ability to perceive, use, understand, and manage all other emotions, those four uh, particular things. Of course, this is one of the most popular definitions, but there are many, many others. I just picked that because it's one of the most uh, commonly used. These complicated subjects never have one definition, yeah? This term emotional intelligence was first coined in 1990 by some researchers, this uh, Mayor N. Sullivan. But with time, someone called David uh, Goldman took this topic up and developed it in a different way, in the sense that he started to communicate more about it. It's a new area that is developing, and today I've been taken to class myself several times to be taught emotional intelligence. That's why I can stand here, because I've been a student of emotional intelligence. I sit in boards that believe that everybody must continue learning. And I'm a believer in learning. So one of the things, skills they, they say that board members need, which is now CEOs and board directors, like we have directors here, they say that most of them are there. They are able to reach there because they are, have enhanced their emotional intelligence. So other people are able to look up to them. That's why they vote for them to go up. That's why they support them. They, that's why they can lead them. They allow them to be their leaders. Therefore, if we want to raise our opportunities and our chances to get there, we need to combine both IQ and EQ. They say that the one common thing about the best and most effective leaders is that emotional intelligence. And basically what it means is that you all have, you, you are starting at a common place where you have, maybe similar, when you apply for a job, for example, it says the minimum requirements, isn't it? So you, you apply to become the manager, the managing director, the CFO, the finance director of this corporation. You apply to become that, and you look at all the things they've written, and you have all of them. By the way, I, I learned that women, by the time they apply for any job, they have everything that is written on the requirements. Men don't have everything written. No, they will create it. They don't have everything, they will go and say, although I don't have that, I also have this which makes up for that, and that kind of thing, yeah? But for ladies, as we wait to have everything, or be, you know, before we apply for a job. So when it's written, you say, no, this one I don't have, therefore I won't apply. Basically, what it means, when you apply, you have, the people who are short, you said, tend to have all the necessary skills. 
from a technical point of view. So what helps us separate? Like recently, I was involved in a recruitment process. I sit in, uh, in the Nominations and Governance Committee of uh, a board. The thing that separates candidates for senior office is actually emotional intelligence. Really, the ability to demonstrate that ability to, you know, of self-awareness. The ability of being able to manage yourself and to manage others, to inspire and motivate others. The ability to have empathy. Those are the kind of things that you look for when you're looking for somebody who's going to be a leader. They don't even need to know everything. All they need is to know how to work with people. It's more critical at this point because they already know that, the basics, yeah? So I was remembering the other day about, uh, sometimes I read a clip about this uh, famous manufacturer, Henry Ford, who created the Ford Motor Vehicle. Uh, how he was once caught up in a, in a case in court because a journalist wrote in the newspaper that he, he is ignorant. He used that word, ignorant. And he sued him and said, how can he say I'm ignorant? He went to court, he called his lawyers and told them, go to court and sue this journalist for damages, for calling me ignorant. Then the journalist asked the judge if he could be allowed to prove that he's ignorant. That they, you know, of course, that Ford is ignorant. <laughs> and so he, the judge said, go ahead, show us how ignorant he is. And he, he started asking him questions. Do you know how much um, money was made in the motor industry last year? Or do you know questions of knowing things that were relevant to his industry? And he told the judge, these questions are irrelevant. Where I sit, I have it has many matters. If I want to know how many vehicles were produced in the year 2020, I press the red button and I call the person who's supposed to be responsible for that. If I want to know about the finances of this company or its competitors, if I want to know about the growth of competition in my industry, if I want to know what pays the blue button, the green button, the yellow button, the and all those buttons, I press those buttons and the person responsible for that delivers the solution, the answer. It's my job. The judge agreed he was not ignorant. Is that ignorant? No. He had emotional intelligence. He knew about working with people. He knew how to harness, sorry, how to harness the resources of people, how to harness the best in each person and not to allow people to delegate upward. Actually, one of the things that made some people not qualify for a, the jobs upward is because their mindset is of doing. It is not of inspiring, motivating, and tapping into the abilities of others. For that reason, they think they should hire people who are lower than them instead of better than them. So that they can entrust them with responsibilities that they don't have to have sleepless nights about. That's emotional reality. When you are looking for CEOs, when you are looking for people to sit in such positions, we actually look for somebody who may appear to some people. Some people even complain and say, how come so and so who has even a master's in this and a master's in that and a that has not been given that job and he's the one who is more educated. Others ask, how come so and so who is the one with the, I mean, who's done, who has this and that, this experience or that experience, has not been given that job and he has worked for even more years and now they brought a younger person to come and be and like you know like when somebody like uh this the former ceo of kcp was appointed joshua oigara when he was appointed ceo of kcp some people said he's too young but he had and many people sat in that interview who are older more experienced in terms of years but maybe you are saying you have 20 years experience but it's the same experience multiplied by 20. But what these people are looking for is not even that. They are looking for where is your emotional intelligence? How self-aware are you? How good are you at self-management? How good are you at managing others? At motivating others? What is your level of empathy? Are you able to get the best out of people? So even if you are not the one you know, you can work with top-level engineers, top-level what, and what you need is that 
if you bring that skill for emotional intelligence to be able to harness and make them the best they can be. Help them tap their potential. Help each person tap their potential and bring the ultimate machine, you know, of people put together who are all at their best, who are enjoying their work, who love to work with that organization, and for that they will. That is how you get those level jobs. So employees with a high level of emotional intelligence are highly valued. In fact, that's what everybody is looking for. Research has proven, actually, there is so much research showing that emotional intelligence is what makes a difference. That organizations actually, even the recruitment organizations, those in the HR, they actually know that this is the one thing that uh, they are looking for. And when we are working with the recruitment organizations, we hire a recruitment organization that proves that they know how to look for that. Because that is what will help us achieve what we are looking for, find the right people. And that's why we say attitude. We say it was this, uh, who is this who say that attitude is a small thing? It's the kind of thing we are talking about. That emotional intelligence makes a huge difference in the workplace, in the family, in as a parent, in community. It makes a big difference in being able to relate with people, to manage people, to manage yourself, and to deliver the highest possible value and bring out people's best potential. The managers with better emotional intelligence or with greater emotional intelligence tend to be the ones who are able to manage the COVID-19 outbreak in other world. Because they had that awareness enabled them to cope and to build resilience in the organization. Because they could bring people together, give them hope, inspire them, help them see that it's possible, that they can work it out, that it's not gone, that they do not, you know, to basically bring that which is needed when situations are very tough. They are able to be more adaptive and to help their teams to become adaptive and to fit in situations like that. Now, who could have imagined that we have something like uh, the kind of lockdowns we had during COVID, where that a hotel is closed, where the airlines can't move? Who could imagine that? You cannot prepare anyone for that. So you can't hire somebody and say they will be. What we ask for in the interviews, we look for crisis management ability, we look for adaptability, basically we are looking for emotion. So the, the makeup, I've already talked about the makeup of emotional intelligence, the self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. I think that's what I've been talking about the whole time, but that's the summary. Those are the things that you need to develop for you to build, uh, to be, to enhance. We say that we all have it. It's to enhance it. We all have it, isn't it? We all have emotional intelligence. We wouldn't be here. Because without emotional intelligence, you can't get here. You can't be a professional sitting in this room. Yes. So what we are saying, we only need to enhance it. We already have it. We need to work on how to enhance it to another level so that we can go to those other places of exploiting our, our full potential. In my video, sometimes I talk about some of the steps and I say you need to pause and reflect. Many times is that when we are caught up in the emotional situation, we, we are not able to say pause and reflect. So you need to like identify the emotion, be able to analyze and tell what it is, and then you need to pause. We say if you don't pause, and reflect in a situation, you end up being caught up with a behavior that is not the most fitting for that situation. And um, sometimes I think about when you have an accident, as one of the times when your emotional intelligence is being caught upon you. Because many times we react, you get out, you leave your handbag there, and it comes and takes it. But in, the emotional intelligence would first say, pause and reflect. And as you get out, first you pull down, and you'd remember that you can lock the car before you get out. <laughs> so that your hard work is safe. But if you don't pause and reflect, what will you do? That is what they call reaction versus response. When you just get out like you, you didn't even think or you might or do, you react instead of responding. So we are encouraged to respond with the thought process. The other thing we say is that you should forgive the triggers. Because many times we blame ourselves. Forgive yourself. 
We blame our friends, forgive them. We blame our colleagues and even our family members. We say they are the ones who have caused it. They were the ones who have caused us to react in anger or to do the wrong thing. So it helps to forgive yourself. And to see the bigger picture, like in that case of the accident, maybe somebody hit your car from behind, maybe it's a small scratch and uh, you can repair it yourself, but because you are feeling self-righteous, you stand there making a lot of noise, you are going for an interview. <laughs> you delay, by the time you remember, you are late for the interview. You lose that opportunity. So, if you force an effect, you'll be able to tell, you see the big picture, and like, and then choose the positive action. We talked about self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Basically, they all tie into the other Four. So in conclusion, what we are saying, by mastering emotional intelligence, you can continue to rise in your career, in your life, in your business, in whatever organization you work in, your family, you can continue to maintain a harmonious relationship in the family. We said it's about balance, never perfection. They are beef, you know, because they say, they say that uh, it's easy for you to be to manage staff when things are normal, like when your children are acting normal, your spouse is acting normal. It's when they start acting abnormal, that is when it's a challenge, eh? and that's when you need this enhanced level of emotional intelligence. And when it's achieved, then the heart trusts the mind, and you become able to have that balance. And as we said, we all have it. All we need is to enhance it. So thank you very much. I wish you all the best as you work to build a higher level of EQ. And as I'm working myself too, because nobody really. So let us all work to improve this um, emotional intelligence. Thank you very much and may God bless you. I'm sure there's a few things that have caught our eye. Uh, for me, it was actually one of your first slides where you said, uh, stop playing small and leave your potential. That's basically a challenge for us this evening. I also liked uh, the one about where if it's your husband, uh, keep talking and don't, <laughs> don't count. Uh, we shall put that into practice. Yeah? I, I hope things work out well. However, um, they're still uh, finding a balance, and you talked about us finding a balance always. As accountants, I think one of the things that we know how to do is actually telling the truth, because things for us are usually black and white. So we are either telling the absolute truth or uh, it's basically lies at the end of the day. So, but how can we coach our truth in such a way that when we deliver it, it does not hurt, and there's a, a human touch to it, and an intelligent way of uh, basically telling the truth. I also liked the, the fact that we already have uh, emotional intelligence, uh, though I guess in, in, in varying quantities. <laughs> we just need to enhance it. I, I like that. And, and basically for me, my question is, um, what kind of um, exercises or what kind of, because um, if, if you want to bodybuild, you know, you go to the gym, you lift weights, how do you build emotional intelligence from where you are? Uh, there are things that you can work through when it comes to you know, uh, emotions such as anger, but sometimes uh, when things go wrong and you may need to react in a certain way, most of us at the end of the day, we sit back and you know, like a, a, an hour or 30 minutes down the line, we are, I wish I had done this. So how can we coach ourselves in such a way that we are able to react uh, 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 in, in, in a way that basically we will not live to regret um, sometime in the future. That's my question. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, for those of us who have questions, uh, Dr. Gahu will take questions now. Uh, questions or comments for Dr. Thank you very much, Dr. Gahu. That was quite enlightening, quite insightful. And uh, thank you very much for coming, for agreeing to come. So there's one thing that I want to say, which um, you said at the beginning, that if your mother annoys you or your parents annoy you, how many times should you count? 
And I was just thinking, for my mom and my dad, I think it's going to be 8 minutes. But for the other people, I have like 30, 40, and 50. So I was asking my, myself, so what's the difference? And I'm just thinking, the difference is maybe I make a decision on how I'm going to, I don't maybe comment on that, on how I'm going to react when it comes to other people. Then, um, I wanted to ask, I mean, how, if I'm preparing to go for an interview, or I'm preparing to go for, well, yeah, for some interview, or I'm doing an interview, how can I be able to tell that this person is emotionally intelligent? How can I be able to tell that? What are the qualities that you look at? Then the other question I think uh, the chair asked, how do you develop emotional intelligence? I mean, are there steps? And can you be optimally, be emotionally intelligent? Thank you. Wow, many questions. Um, <laughs> We have uh, any other question? Maybe one more. Any question or comment? Yeah, I can take this then. Okay, okay. Yeah, the first question. Oh, okay, first, the, I like the statement. Accountants are people of facts. And I know numbers must balance the logical way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question you raised about how can you balance that is about truth. It, it's between, very quickly, I can say it's between telling the truth with care and telling the truth with just good. Actually, that's there. They say there are four ways. But the optimal is how to tell the truth while still showing that you care about the person. And for example, if you're talking about the facts of work performance, you're talking about the work, not the person. So you don't tell the person you are very fully showing you that. You tell the person the way they did it and show them how to do it better. That is the balance. They say that for you to be entitled to tell somebody the truth, you must build a decent relationship. Especially to tell somebody about truth. A truth about bad, like bad performance or like they failed you in this. They say you, you work to build relationships. You invest in building relationships with the people who you are close to, it's the people you work with, it's the people you uh, live with, it's your family. Have you built the relationship that entitles you or that enables you to have that opportunity to tell truth without too much worry? If you have not, you then have to always be very cautious. And that's where we say, show care as we tell the truth. That's why people start, and I know accountants find that very hard, that you start by saying, I like the way you did A and B and C. <laughs> However, then you go to the one. That's one way to balance that. Eh? By the way, that question of the, the creep I quoted, I saw that was not being very popular. I found it very interesting because everybody, so to, a lot of people liked it. Eh? And it kind of makes sense, isn't it? So when she said about the husband, keep talking, be very careful. It depends the type of husband. <laughs> kind of relationship have you built to entitle you to keep talking? In all those situations, emotional intelligence kind of requires you to, to balance based on the nature of the relationship. That's why relationship management is one of the key aspects of emotional intelligence. What is a relationship? Because if you keep talking in front of some men, what will happen? <laughs> We'll be, taking, we'll be coming to visit in hospital the next week. Yeah? So be careful, don't go and keep talking and say I say it so, eh? Yes. First ask, what relationship have you built? It's a relationship. The quality of relationship you build is what entitles you to be able to actually correct people, advise people, coach, and do whatever it is or even if you want. When you don't build the relationship, then you have a challenge being able to do it right. Um, then the other question was, uh, how do you manage this whole thing? Yeah? And there are steps. One of them is, for example, to first identify the emotion. What are you feeling? What does that require? First, you must pause. So me, I always say my first step is pause and reflect. Pause and reflect. As you pause, you will reflect and you will be able to tell. Because sometimes people can't even name the emotions they are feeling. You don't know whether you're happy or you're angry. You don't know why that you are. 
What are you feeling? Feelings are not that automatic. So by that cost already you have started to manage it. If you pause, already you start to, you are trying to establish. Then you appreciate the nature of the emotion you are feeling. And of course this happens in a flash. Eh? And then you analyze kind of what, where, when, who, how it is in, the things that led you to this point. And then how you actually then start responding is to approach with confidence and being proactive, looking for the best side of a situation, not the negative. And then I talked about the other step would be to forgive, forgive all the people involved so that you do not carry that burden for too long. And then looking at the bigger picture, I gave you the example of the accident person who forgot he had an interview and stood there and it turned out the scratch that he was going to repair, actually he could live with this car with that scratch for a few months <coughs> before he had time to take it because it wasn't that important. But by the time he left there, he was extremely angry, bitter, frustrated, and then he missed his interview, he was even more angry. And when he went to tell his wife, the wife asked, why did you leave? He was got angry again. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that emphasis the nature of the relationship you are built with someone. By the way, like even for parents, if you have a beautiful relationship, it's so easy to tell each other things. It's only not to tell each other in anger. What we are saying is, don't do it in anger, slow down, pause and refresh, so that what we are saying is not out of anger, it is something considered, so that it can have the best outcome. Yeah, I think I've answered most of the questions, and as I said, you now have the power to go and study all you can about this subject. What I wanted to trigger in you is the need to, uh, to learn more, to invest in learning more about digital intelligence. Go research, learn, keep learning about it because it's something that travels all of us all the time. I myself keep feeling I need to know more, I need to know more. So why I'm able to share, I'm sharing what I've learned because of my own challenges. So I would just challenge you to continue learning, seeking, and sharing what you learn also, so that we can all get better, isn't it? Yes. <laughs>